Hey friend, this is Anil and in this video, we will learn how we can log in in ASP.NET Core Web API using Postman. So in my previous video, I already told you that how we can create identity table and how we can register a user using ASP.NET Core Web API using Postman. So here, if you will see, if I'll just hit the send button, then you can see the token has been generated. And here you can see the token information that is expiry time of the token and username of the token. Okay. So the same thing I want to achieve in this video. So let me open, let me create a new solution. So if you didn't watch my previous video, then before proceeding, watch first. So let me click on next button and here login core web API. Okay. Click on create button. So in my next video, I will let you know how we can authenticate and authorized SP.NET core web API. Fine. So the solution has been created. Now the same thing uh, we are uh, going to do it again. We have to install NuGet package. So there are three to four NuGet package that we have to install. ASP.NET Core authentication dot JWT bearer and the second one is ASP.NET Core dot identity fine and the third one is Microsoft dot ASP.NET Core dot identity dot entity framework and the last token is sp.net sorry microsoft dot entity framework core dot tools so four packages four NuGet packages I have installed in this machine now the same thing we have already did in our previous videos that we will we will create a authentication folder so let me copy and create that folder over here and we have to create application user class And we have to inherit this by identity user. Okay, perfect. Now, what we will do, we will create a another class that will be application DB context class. And this application DB context class will be inherit the identity DB context. And inside this, we have to, we are adding DB context option. And here we are uh, creating override method on model creating. Cool. Now let me open startup.cs class and in the startup.cs class I'm adding the content because I have already created everything in my previous video. So I will not make you understand code step by step. If you didn't watch my previous video then before proceeding watch first. So here 
what I'm doing first let's let me add the namespace and one more nuget package we have to install sp.net identity framework code SQL server click on I accept now what I have to do if you will see in startup.cs class then what you can do just move here and check this use SQL server for this we have added recently we have added a plugin cool so here we have added okay now this is the JWT bearer options now let me uh, add app setting.json in the app setting.json this is our database string and this is my valid issuer and this is valid audience and this is a secret key so all but everything i have discussed my uh, previous uh, video that uh, valid issuer uh, should be your domain or whatever uh, you want for valid issuer if you want a valid issuer from different location that you can put that location over there suppose i want to put a valid issuer like my local host and secret key should be greater than for 16 character now let me add a command before to add a command i have to replace this database string so let me create a new database login db just click on ok button and database has been created let me connect this database uh, with my application click on tool and connect to database and here put your server name and choose your database here you can see login login db right click on test connection succeed click on ok button the database has been linked now from here we can find the connection string just click uh, right click over here connect on property and put this connection string over here fine so we have done this we have done this now we are two steps away so here one more folder we need to add that name will be migrations add a new folder migrations and we have to initialize the migrations for that i have to add a package manager console just hit the enter button so here you can see the initial so whatever name suitable name you want you can provide over here so build succeed here you can see in the migration yeah in the migration you can see the schema has been generated so here if you will see the schema the schema has been generated everything i told you in my previous video so still the database has not been generated over here if you will see the database still we don't have any table 
but if I will run this update database command, the database will be generated in my SQL Server update database. So build started, build succeed. Fine. Let me refresh this database and check the tables. The tables has been created, right? So the next thing we have to do that we have already created a controller that is authentication controller. So let me create that authentication controller over here. Add, click on add. And in this authentication controller, what we have did, we have already created a register one, right? Now, I don't want to create the registered method. I want the login method over here. Okay, so for login, login model. So we have to add the login model also. So let me add a login model. So login model has been added. Now here I will add a few property that is username and your password okay and one more thing i want to add the response class that we have added already in my previous video and in this response class we have to add two property first is status and second is string now what we have to do in the authentication controller if i'll see i'll add this namespace here user manager so we have to add the user manager also so the user manager i will add Here I will add the user manager and I will add the configuration for the user manager. Perfect. So here for the user manager, I have to add a method. Cool. So what is this method you can see over here and I don't want role manager a role manager we will discuss in my later on videos and this is the claim Fine. So here you can see here you can see the complete method. If I'll do it 100%, then you can see properly the complete code for login. Okay. And what we are doing in the login here we are finding the user and after that here we are uh, passing the password and the role i will discuss a letter on the video okay what is the role i will discuss this uh, role later on and the user is authenticate then here we are returning token 
expiration and user okay so we cannot register a user e1 we have to add a registered binding model also over here so let me add a register bond binding model also so add a register binding model class over here and add this property over here and also need to add a registered method a registered method i already discussed in my previous video okay so i can zoom this little bit so you can look it quickly fine so now we have set up everything okay the database has been created right now let me run this application so here the application is running now let me open the console postman sorry and in the postman what i will do I will just replace this okay and what we have did in the header in the header we have a uh, content type application JSON we have added and this is the post request and in the body here we have to select the JSON because because we are passing the JSON and this is the raw data just click on the send button and see the result yes user has been created so let me open the SQL server and execute it the connection is broken and recover is not possible what happening This is login DB and let me open this again. Hmm. Let me close this. Fine. Now Fail to retrieve data for request. Okay, I think it's saying that it's not connected. Let me connect it. Yeah. So I have just restarted my SQL server because I was getting some issue. So here you can see the user has been registered. Let me register the another user. So if I'll say only Anil. Okay, and here the email ID is Anil. Click on the send button. User has been registered again. Let me execute this again. And here you can see the user has been registered. Right. So using the same user, I want generate the token okay and this was our localhost url so what is this url actually here you can see api slash authentication slash login so this is what here if you will see in the authentication controller then here you can see the route api slash controller okay so the same thing we are doing api slash controller and slash login our method name just click on the send button and here you can see the token token expiration and user okay so 
that's it for this video in this video we want generate only the token so in my next video i will let you know using this token how we can uh, how we can authorize our uh, authenticate and authorize our web api okay so in this video we have learned then how we can register a user and how we can uh, log in a user and how we can generate a token so using this token how we can authenticate our uh, user that i will show you in my next tutorial so i hope you like this video and if you like this video then please subscribe my channel thanks for watching my video have a nice day bye bye